everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my full review of the San Francisco mobile phone. If you want a product tour and unboxing, please see my earlier video on the Geekanoids channel. Now a quick rundown on the specs of this handset. This mobile phone is also known as the ZTE Blade. It is available from Orange in the UK and it costs just £99 on pay as you go. It runs Google Android 2.1 OS, also known as Eclair. The screen is three and a half inches, 480 by 800 resolution, and it is an AMOLED capacitive touchscreen. It's a very uh, good screen for this price point device. You also get Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, 3G, and FM radio, and around the back, a 3.2 megapixel camera. You get 150 megabytes of internal memory according to the specs on the ZTE website, although some people are reporting that it's got around about 512 megabytes of internal memory. You get a two gigabyte micro SD card supplied and you can put up to a 32 gigabyte card in there. So what do I think of this mobile phone? Well, I've had it for about a week now. The touch screen is superb, very sensitive, to the touch, been extremely pleased with how this touch screen is performing. I have made some very slight changes to the user interface while I've had it, got rid of some of the uh, sort of orangeness of the phone and switched over to a more standard Android uh, interface and I find this is a lot nicer to use. Now Google's Android 2.1 uh, runs nice and fast on it, certainly fast enough. There's a 600 megahertz processor in here and I think it's snappy enough. If I pop onto my tweet deck, very quick at loading the um, application, very quick at uh, swiping between screens. So I think that 600 megahertz processor for general application use works very well indeed. Now, I've had this unlocked it should be running on Orange, but it is in fact, if I go down here, running on T-Mobile, extremely easy to unlock, and I don't normally unlock mobile phones, but it was about five pounds and took about an hour to get the unlock code from the company that I used. Now, battery life, extremely good. I'm getting just over a day of use on a full charge. Video playback's nice. Let's show you something playing back on YouTube. It's not choppy at all extremely uh, pleasant to use. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to the first official episode of Shane and Friends, a show where all my characters have their own little segment. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I will see you right after the video. So there you go, another bit of video playing back. Nice and fast to load over the 3G network and really quite good. Music playback's also good using the headphones. The built-in speaker, which is on this side down the bottom, not very good, it's acceptable, but much better through the headphone jack, which is located on the top there. Now for the bad bits, the camera. Well, it's okay for photos, takes reasonable color, no flash as you can see. For video, pff, absolutely rubbish, wouldn't even go there. It's gonna record at 640 by 480. I'll show you a little bit of video on the screens I'm talking, but not very good at all, so I wouldn't bother buying this if all you're going to want to do is take video. Also, you notice that I stream that video over uh, 3G. If I go into my settings, it has got Wi-Fi on here, but it keeps on uh, dropping the Wi-Fi connection, so that's one of the bad points. Let me turn Wi-Fi on and just wait for that to kick in, and then we will... Here we go, it's already connecting to one of my uh, access points here and it's connected. We've got the little connection thing in the status bar there. So it keeps dropping Wi-Fi connection. This will keep this Wi-Fi connection as long as I remain in my house. But as soon as I go out and then return back to the house, it won't automatically connect. So that's a little bit frustrating. Also, this top power button, if I give you that side on view, you can see it's wonky. And that is because I've already taken the phone sort of casing off and it is very, very cheaply made. It's a little cheap plastic power button and it's already wonky just a few days in of owning the handset. So that's not very good either. But other than that, it's very good. Somebody did actually um, send me a message and asked me to test the gaming performance 
on the handset. Well, I've downloaded Asphalt 5 from Gameloft, and I have to say that this particular sort of game, there's nothing, no bad uh, sort of uh, name on Gameloft or anything because their games are absolutely superb, especially on higher spec Android phones and also the iPhone and iPod Touch and the iPad, of course. But on this particular phone, 3D games are not what it is designed for. It's got a 600 megahertz processor, as I mentioned, which is extremely good for standard applications and for puzzle games and things like Angry Birds, but certainly for something that tries to push the envelope a little bit on graphics, you will see it plays very choppy indeed. As you can see, load times are not that fast either, so I'm going to skip this part of the video and come back to you when the game's actually loaded. So that load time was round about 30 seconds. Now the game's ready to play. Let's get into the race. And as you can see, the game already is starting to be a little bit choppy. Not too bad at the moment. My driving could certainly improve. There we go, a little bit of a glitch there. And another glitch. So it runs okay, it's playable, but certainly uh, not the smoothest of games and that is down to the 600 megahertz processor. So I'm going to quit out of that for now and just uh, finish off this review. Um, what this boils down to really is price point, £99. The overall build quality and performance is very solid. The screen, absolutely superb. And for £99 you are getting a bargain here. Just don't expect to play the high-end games, but for day-to-day -day use, Things like checking email, using Twitter, uh, communicating, making phone calls, messaging, etc. Extremely good. The actual sound quality when you're making and taking calls is also very acceptable. Not the best, but certainly more than usable. And don't forget, you're paying under £100 for this. If you want a smartphone but can't afford the likes of an HTC Desire or a Samsung Galaxy S, then check out the Orange San Francisco. It's a bit of a bargain, really and certainly comes recommended from me if you are on a budget. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please do come back soon and check out more video reviews on the Geekanoids channel. Just wanted to give a quick shout out about the Geekanoids iPhone application. It's available free of charge in the iTunes App Store, works on both the iPhone and the iPod Touch, and gives you access to all of my video reviews, all of my news updates, as well as some extra goodies thrown in there too. So please pop onto the App Store and search for Geekanoids and download it to your iPhone or iPod Touch. This video review is sponsored by EasyDraw, making drawing fun on Mac OS X.